Rocksmith 2014 Remastered is still going strong. I'm constantly getting questions on my video that I did back in 2017 about how to create your own Rocksmith 2014 CDLCs. Recently, I've had to format my computer, and I lost all the tools for creating CDLCs. I've had to download all the new versions of the programs, so I figured today would be a great time to make a new video on how to create CDLCs in 2022. The only problem is I've completely forgot how to do it. So after downloading all the programs again and watching my first video, I have somewhat of a grasp on how to do it again. There's a lot of things that have changed since my last tutorial, so I hope this will clear up a lot of the questions. The first few issues I've ran into is where essential programs and updates that are needed on your computer I didn't already have. Uh, if you've been using your computer for a while now, chances are you already have what you need. If you're off a fresh install of Windows, though, you might run into a few headaches like I have. Some of the programs we'll be using will require some plugins, which the programs should prompt you to install them. But the only thing that didn't pop up for me was the .NET framework. Uh, the only time I got this prompt to install was when I first generated my song using the Rocksmith Toolkit. Uh, so if this happens to you, just stop what you're doing and download it and keep going. I also needed Java, but that was fixed simply by going to the Java website and downloading. So if you run into any of these issues, please stop what you're doing and go and download them right away. So to start following along with this tutorial, you're going to need the following programs. Links for what I can link will be down in the description. So first off, you're going to need the UltraStar Creator. Then you're going to need the Rocksmith Toolkit. Uh, after that, you're going to need a special version of WYs. You're also going to need Editor on Fire. And you are going to need either Guitar Pro or Tux Guitar. I have not used gu or Tux Guitar, so I won't be able to help you with that. I also have an older version of Guitar Pro that I got years and years ago that I will still be using. For this tutorial, I've decided that I'm going to go with the same song from my original video tutorial because no one has made it yet. And by no one has made it yet, I mean no one has made all of the arrangements for it yet. I'm not going to be uploading my version to Customs Forge because I want to see what you guys can do with this song. It may even be your first submission to Customs Forge. If you do make this song for Rocksmith, please leave a like and comment the username on Customs Forge, and I will be sure to download your version and try it out and let you know how you did. All right, so let's start getting everything we need. First thing you're going to do is head over to Customs Forge. If you don't have an account there already, uh, make one because this isn't an option. You should already have one. This is where you are going to find the links to download WYs, Editor on Fire, and the Rocksmith Toolkit. And just remember, online message boards are notorious for having expired links. So if the link doesn't work, just look around and you'll find it. The only program I can't help you out with is the Guitar Pro. You won't be able to follow along with this tutorial properly without it. Uh, I have included a link to the newest version, but you may be able to find older versions online somewhere for really cheap. Alternatively, you can download Tux Guitar, but like I said earlier, I'm not familiar with this program. So it will be in the dark while using this program a little. Now that we have all the programs we need, we're going to start getting all the files that we're going to need to create the CDLs. First thing you're going to need is obviously the song, and I mean the actual MP3. I will not be linking the mp3 of the song because I actually had it on an external hard drive from years and years ago. Uh, so you're going to be on your own for finding that file. Second, you're going to need the actual guitar tabs. So if you head over to Ultimate Guitar and type in Default Deny. And right here you're going to see where it says Guitar Pro. Click on that. And you will see there is only one Guitar Pro file found. You're going to click on that, and you're going to download the Guitar Pro tabs. If you look up at the top here, it shows that you got clean guitar, distortion guitar, bass, and drums, which we don't need the drums. You'll just scroll down to where it says Download Guitar Pro Tab and click that button. And before you download, if you scroll up to the top also, you'll see the actual tuning of the song in guitar. So it's D-A-D-G-B-E, so it's drop D. Same with the rhythm. And the bass is actually E standard, but he's using a five-string bass. But if you scroll through, he is not actually using the B string. So it'll work perfect. Now you're going to need the album art. So if you just go to Google and type in default deny album art, click on images, you'll find a bunch of images. If you hover over top, 
you'll see that it says 640 by 640. You need one that's at least 500 by 500. So if I was to click this one, you'll see this one's only 300 by 300. You don't want that one. You want a square image that's around 500 by 500 to 640 by 640. And don't use a picture of your dog axle wearing sunglasses or something stupid. Please be respectful of the bands and use something proper. Don't worry about the lyrics just yet. They're easily accessible everywhere, so we can wait till the last minute before we download. Now that we got everything, before you start anything, make sure you are organized. I like to put all my icons and folders on the desktop for where I can easily see them. I can move them when I'm all done with everything. That's not a problem, but it's just easier to put everything on the desktop. You also want to create a shortcut for your DLC folder, your editor on fire folder, and just create a whole new folder for your project. All right, so I'm going to show you my program settings now. So if we open up the Rocksmith Toolkit, we can go to Configuration, and you'll see that I have a path to my Rocksmith, my Rocksmith 2014, and where I installed WYs. If you don't have these paths in properly, it's not going to work when you go to generate your song. Now let's open up our editor on Fire, and I will show you my settings in here. So if you go to File, Settings, this I think this is all default stuff, but double check that. Then you want to go to File, Preferences, Preferences. Make sure you copy this exactly. Make sure it's on Piano Roll and set to Rocksmith. All right, now that's all out of the way. Let's start creating the CDLC. The first thing you need to do is figure out the audio bit rate of your MP3. To find that out, simply right click on your MP3 and go to properties and click on details. And it says right here what your audio bit rate is. Mine is 192. All right, open up your editor on fire. Click on file and new. Select your MP3, click Open, fill out the artist and title if it's not already in there, and click OK. And let's create a new folder, hit OK, and then select your encoder quality, which mine was 192. I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to let it do its thing. And it put the song in for us. All right, so right away we are going to hit F5, and that's going to make our waveform come up. So you'll notice that right away the song will start. So if we were to make this in Rocksmith, as soon as we hit Enter when we select our our song and then tuned our guitar, the song would start right away. But we want at least three seconds before that, so for us to get ready. So in order to do that, we're going to hit Song. Leading silence, click on under pad, click milliseconds, and type in 3000. It'll work. And hit re encode. Hit OK. Let it do its thing. Now, if I was to hit space bar, it's going to play three seconds of dead silence. And you just use your arrow keys to scroll back and forth through this. Now you'll notice that Editor on Fire defaults to 120 beats per minute. Uh, but chances are our song is not going to be 120 beats per minute. So this is where we're going to start using our Guitar Pro or Tux Guitar. So we're going to Open our folder, open our guitar profile. And at the top right here, you'll see that our beats per minute is 114. Minimize this. Go into where it says beat and beat per minute change. So we're going to do one. And hit OK. There we go. Now, these tabs are a little bit weird when it comes to creating Rocksmith songs. Oops. So if you look at the tabs down here, 
it's separated by clean guitar and distortion guitar. So what that means is after you play the clean part on the lead, as soon as it switches to distortion, it's just going to be dead time. And if you're playing lead, that's going to be really boring for you. So what we're going to do is copy the distortion guitar from here to here and from here to the end and paste it in the clean guitar and we'll use clean guitar as our lead guitar. So to do this, you're going to want to click on distortion guitar. Go on copy from bars 12 to 37. Only on the current track because you don't want to copy all the tracks. Hit OK. Then click where it's empty and hit Control V or paste. And it's going to place it at the selection and hit OK. And we're going to want to do the same thing over here. So if we pull this way, 54 to 70. So we're going to hit Control C. 54. Okay, paste it in here. There we go. So now the lead guitar will play all the way through and we'll set up the, the uh, distortion guitar to just play this section and this section and we'll use that as the rhythm. All right, so we're going to save this file. there now that we did that it's going to have a little bit of overlay and I'll show you what I mean once we load it into guitar pro but we're also going to start with bass all right if you'll notice at the top here it says part real guitar I like to start with bass because for me it's a little bit easier to hear so I can line up the notes for bass first and then I can input the lead and it'll line up with what I set as the bass. So it's a lot less moving things around. So to do that, I'm going to hit song, track, art real bass. And then I'm going to go to file, import, guitar pro. And I'm going to navigate to my project folder, the new tabs that I made, and hit open. I'm going to hit no, hit no, and find the bass. So remember, we're setting that one up as lead, that one up as rhythm, and then bass, and hit import. All right, so if we scroll through this, we will see that our first bass note doesn't start till the one minute mark. But if we actually play the song, we will see that our first bass note doesn't actually start until here. So. Hell, I'm leaving, I'm not giving. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag this over to that waveform. So to do that, make sure you're staying above this black mark and below this because if you start dragging, it's going to mess everything up. I don't know why Editor on Fire does this. Don't ask me. It's always been that way. So we're going to start by dragging this over. Roll a little more arrows. Drag that to where we think it's going to start. So far that looks all right. But as we listen to the song, you'll notice that it's not going to be lined up. Yeah, that one is way off. So I'm not going to start at the beginning and start moving every note. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the end, find the last bass note, and line that one up first. That's the last bass note, but it might still keep going. You'll notice this is way off. 
So that looks like the last base note right there. So it'd be between 343 and 344. So I'm gonna have a lot of dragging to. You'll notice that these aren't lining up on the bass notes, so I'm gonna start dragging. So far that looks pretty close. If it helps you, you can actually hit C on your keyboard and that will put claps on. So when it claps, that's when you should see your note light up. Now what you're going to have to do is, after you've lined up the first note and the last note, you're going to have to go through every note. And you'll notice you'll find notes like this once in a while, where it's overlapping. So you're on a sustain right here, but then you have to play a different note but still hold that sustain. Um, that might be wrong. So it, it is wrong. So what we're going to do, fix that, we're going to... Click on this note right here, and you'll have the two note or the two keys beside P. They're brackets. You're gonna hit the left bracket, drag it back, or the right bracket to drag it forward. So we're just gonna bring this back to there, and we're good now. You'll find that probably a couple times in this song. So I'm going to go through this whole song and move notes until they're all lined up. All right, now that we have everything lined up, let's save it and follow the on-screen prompts. Okay, there we go. That one's all set up. Now we are going to go do the lead. Song, track, part, real guitar. Go to File, Import, Guitar Pro again. Desktop. Our modified one. Hit Open. We don't want to say yes to any of these. I found this way is a little bit easier. Before I told you to hit yes, but hit no on both of these. Remember we're doing clean as our lead and hit Import. So the beginning of the song. Line up the first note, it's going to be off, and then line up the last note just like usual.
All right, now that I got it lined up, remember how we changed all this in here and put the distortion guitar up here? That means we're going to have tone changes here and here. So we are going to have to edit Editor on Fire to notice these note changes. So first, we're going to start off with clean because that's how the song starts. Starts off with clean notes. Whoops. Laps, but. Okay, so we're going to start right at the beginning of the song. Go to track, rocksmith, and this is really hard to line up and it always messes up. Go and change, add. Control shift T if you remember that, that's the shortcut. Now we're going to scroll until we get to the distortion guitar. Which is somewhere around here. I'm going to shorten this note just once, because that's where we're going to put our tone chain, right in the center there. Track, rocksmith, tone change, add, distortion. Gonna scroll back till it goes to clean. Here. And I guess it's really hard to line up. I'm just going to go just a little bit before so it's easier. Right there. And back to distortion. Right. I believe that is all of our tone changes. Now I'm going to save this one. All this means is the fingering isn't right on uh, Editor on Fire. So if you update them, most of the time it'll update automatically, but some chords have weird finger positions that Rocksmith doesn't know. So you'll have to manually put them in. All right, one thing I forgot to do when I saved it, I to hit save. We need a default tone set. Do you want to cancel the update? Yes. We're going to set that as the default. Hit done. Forgot to do that. And then file, save again. And that's fine. We're gonna. I'm gonna keep my slides to just one fret slides, rather than sliding all the way from ten now to zero. There we go. And then we can move on to our part real guitar two, which is going to be our rhythm. File import R Pro.
All right, we're going to open up Google. And we can just get them right off of Google. So I'm going to select all of those. Hit Control C to copy. That open up Ultrastar Create. You'll notice in here if there's syllables, put a plus in. If you want to repeat, use the plus and the tilde, but I never use that one. So we're going to open up our MP3, but we're not actually opening up our MP3 because we saved our files with editor on file. We're going to actually open the editor on file one. So if we open up our editor on file, going to default deny. This is the one we're going to get because remember it generated a whole new song when we added that three seconds of dead time. That's what we're going to need. So uh, I don't know if we can, yep, just drag that over like that. Idle. Don't worry about anything else. And then our lyrics in here. All right. So these ones in brackets mean that the backup singers are singing those. We're just going to delete those because they get in the way sometimes when you try to do this. Do those. And I think there is an error somewhere in one of these lyrics, but it doesn't matter. What I'll do is I'll, I'll show you how it's done. Basically, you're going to hit play, and every word, you're going to hit the space bar. So if you were to look at the whole day wondering, he says wandering. So I'm going to put a plus in there. So then when I play it, I'll wait three seconds, and then it'll start going. Oops. Make a mistake, you got to restart the whole thing. The day I woke up. All right, makes sense. So I'm going to go through all of this, make sure I get all of the pluses where they need to be, and make sure I line all these lyrics up properly. All right, so at the end, if you think you did really good, hit great, save the file, and save it into alt deny folder in editor on fire. And the reason we're doing this is because we're going to be moving all these files over later anyway. Save. Right after that, you can close this, and we have everything in our editor on file. We got our bass, guitar, um, sort of rhythm, lead, and our lyrics. Now we're gonna have to put our lyrics into editor on fire. Then we got to go to song, track, part vocals. Then we're going to file, import, lyrics. We're in here. They're right here. Hit open. So all you got to do is, this is where the lyrics start, apparently. So. The day I woke up and you were gone. Looks good. Everything's set. Now we're going to save again. Hey, 
it this doesn't really matter I always click no hit okay All right and now we got our vocals part this is these are the files that we're going to need to import to our rocksmith toolkit One more thing you could do, I never end up doing it because I always forget. You can go on track, rocksmith, and arrangement type. Notice how we're on part real guitar up here? Right? So if you go to track, rocksmith, arrangement type, we can actually put it to lead. And if it was part real guitar 2 2, we change it to bass or rhythm. And if it was part real bass, we just change it to bass. But it's it's not necessary to do, but it might be something you want to do. All right, there is a lot more to um, editing, stuff like that. So there is ways to change your notes, your slides, your hammer-ons, pull-offs, change the note, everything like that. But we're not going to get into that in this video because it's going to be long enough as it is. Right now, we're just going to do the basic stuff. So now that we have all of our files created, we can actually open up our Rocksmith toolkit and start creating our DLC. So what we're going to want to do is add, actually before we do any of this, so we're going to open up our editor on file folder. Or default deny stuff and open up a project folder. So we are going to make a new folder in here. We'll edit it on fire. And we're going to take all of this stuff and move it, copy it over to here. It might be redundant, it's just easier for me to find. Now we're going to add desktop editor on fire. Now we're going to add all four of those, but to add one at a time, add base, standard tooting, okay, add the next one. Rhythm, label two. So this says lead right here. Just change this to rhythm. Okay. Don't worry about the tones right now. This one. Okay. Our vocals. Right, so we got all four in there. Now we're going to add the album art. There. And now we come to this part. Obviously, we get this far, we're going to have to open up our WYs. All right, for WYs, we're going to hit new, name it and we're put it in new project folder. And then hit OK. Uh oh. Nope. All messed up. Under default work unit, right click, 
import audio files. Click add files. And click i.wave. We moved all the folders from editor on fire over to here. That's going to be the new one. So we're going to open that and hit import. Now after you do that, click the little plus button here and here. Click on deny. Or settings. There we go. <laughs> Remember why it wasn't working? Make sure these check marks are clicked. Hit override parent. Factory conversion settings. Orbis. Orbis quality high. And then hit edit. Now, if you're going to be making them for iOS, Mac, or Android, or whatever, but we're using Windows. We're going to put stereo. Sample rate, 4800, then click edit, change this, 16384, hit OK, then hit convert. Make sure the Windows is checked. If you're on Mac, use Mac. Now that that's done, make sure you close everything. If you don't, you will get an error when you try to compile everything. All right now, we got to find our .ogg. So click in here. So we're going to go into our wise folder, default deny, cache, Windows. Sound effects, and it's going to be actually the WEM, not the .ogg. I'm sorry. And then click open. All right, now we have no tones. So for our tones, we're going to need three different tones: a bass tone, a distortion tone, and a clean tone. So if you were to look in here and hit edit. You'll notice it's just set to one of the defaults that they have. You can either go right into the Rocksmith game and create your own tone and then put everything in here, or you can load tones from other songs. And I'll show you how to do that. We're, oops, we're going to hit import, and I've chosen kind of like a really bad one to do for this one, but just stick with me here. We're going to use the Bench 7 Folds Almost Easy Tones. So we're going to open those. Let's select all three of those and hit continue. Now we are going to go into the base, click edit, change that that okay. now for the rhythm going to change distortion oh what did I do here this one is supposed to be the lead so lead uncheck this most easy clean distortion almost easy clean go now we can remove these two basically default ones remove that one that 
and remove so let's start up here so we got the artist song and we have the album this is not the correct album it's called the fallout and for this one what this one is is how it's searched in so if you were to search by title, or sorry, um, album in Rocksmith, and you have the Fallout, it's going to search by T. So you don't want to put the here. So you just want to put Fallout. So here we're going to put our version as 1.0. This is the beats per minute. So it's going to be 114. So right here is something you are eventually going to have to change. Um, if you have version 1.1 and you keep this the same and you keep both of the versions in your Rocksmith, it will crash it. So just remember that. So for our loudness, this is for our preview loudness. Minus 5 is fine. For the loudness in game, don't crank this up to like minus 30 because it'll, be, it'll just blow your ears out. I like to put this to minus 12. Whoops, the wrong way. All right. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is these tones on this song are ridiculously loud. So we are going to edit them. So if we hit edit, you'll see the volume on this. That is crazy. You're going to want to put this down to, I don't know, probably the same as what we have the volume at, 12. Okay. Same with the distortion. Distortion, whatever. This is the reason I picked these tones to show you. Because as soon as you load up that game and you start playing, it's just going to rock you. All right, now we want it for Rocksmith 2014. Make sure all this stuff is set. We don't want it in Japanese, so don't click that. We're gonna use the Smashing Pumpkin song to encode this. Audio quality, I like to put this up to about five. And after everything is set, hit generate. Now, the first time I ever did this, it wanted me to download the .NET framework. So if that happens, just stop generating, download the .NET framework, and then keep going from there. But we're going to click yes on this because I already have this song in my library. So I want to change this to something different. So I guess I'm going to yes. And I am going to change it or put it in my new project folder. Oh, default deny 1.0. And then I'm going to hit save. Leave that in the editor on fire. 
And no, we don't need to open that. Well, you know what? Let's just hit yes. It'll pop up. It is right here. So now we get to test that song out. So in order for us to test this song out, we're going to open our DLC folder. We're going to find where we saved it. Drag it over and copy here. And then we are going to fire up Rocksmith. We're going to wait for all our songs at the top to enumerate before we do anything because Rocksmith likes to crash on me for some reason. All right, so now we're going to find our song. Go to learn, learn a song. D. And it's right here. So let's see how the tone sounds and everything like that. I'm obviously doing bass because I play bass. I can't play guitar for the life of me. Now we're we're looking for to make sure the notes are all lined up and how the tone sounds and all that stuff because we might have to go back in and edit stuff and I'll show you how to replace the files and regenerate it. So the tone for bass doesn't sound too bad. We're also making sure that the lyrics line up. So obviously the tone for this is horrible. But the notes seem to be lining up all right. have a guitar here so I'm going to hit delete to skip the tuner hopefully it doesn't crash on me you notice the slides are only well some of them are only one string because they weren't specified like this one right here Now what I'm looking for here is, that's the clean tone apparently, but that's also a bass playing it, so it's gonna everything's gonna sound weird. And there's the tone switch right there.
All right, so everything looks good on that one. Now, rhythm. Now remember, the rhythm doesn't have the clean notes. It only has the distortion. I know this is really repetitive. Right, everything looks like it's good but let's say the timing was off on everything I will show you how to fix that real quick so you still have everything up on your screen so if the timing was off on this one you literally move it, make sure it's it's all timed properly, and then file say or damn it file save, and then it'll do all its stuff again, right? So after it's done saving, open up your editor on fire, go in here, find the one that you saved, that you changed, copy it, and paste it into here and override this one and then all you have to do is so it would be this one I would remove it and then click add find the new one keep it at lead because that's what it was uncheck this leave those the same well, you, you might have to change it if you did change your stuff. And then that's it. You don't have to do the WI stuff anymore because it's already been done. And after you get everything set the way you like it, change this to 1.1. Right here, change it to something different, and then generate it and then move that new file that you generate into your DLC folder and delete the other one that you put in there. Delete your original. That should be it. Like I said, I just used these tones because I wanted to show you what you might have some issues with with tones. But feel free to play around with tones, take them from different songs, especially if there's another default song that was made. You can always use those tones if you want. Well, I hope this tutorial helps you guys out, and I hope you guys come up with more songs that have all the arrangements in them rather than just the one you like to play. Because it's really annoying when you go to download a song that you really like. You see it there, and there's no bass or there's no lead. You really kind of want everything in there.
Thanks a lot, guys. I will try to get another tutorial out soon on more Editor on Fire stuff. Uh, if you have any questions, please drop um, a comment, and I'll probably reply to it within a day or two. Thanks. Have a good one.